Hey there! Today I'll be showing you how to create this really cool chain lightning ability in Unreal Engine's gameplay ability system. Let's start off by creating a brand new project using the first person template. Next, enable the gameplay ability system, add the ability system component to your player, as well as a new target dummy actor so we can apply gameplay effects and use abilities on them. Next, we'll want to create an attribute set to control the behavior of this ability. I'll call this lightning attribute set and open it up in my IDE. This attribute set is going to be really simple, so we can just delete the definitions file and add the macro from the guide link below. I think we'll want an attribute for the lightning damage, max bounces, duration, and bounce radius. So I've gone ahead and declared them here. Don't forget to add the ability system component header file, as well as the gameplay abilities module to your module dependencies list. Now that we've defined our attribute set, we can go ahead and create a new data table and initialize all of the attributes. Finally, let's open up our first person character blueprint and give it the attribute set as well as the default attribute data. With all this setup out of the way, let's create a new gameplay ability blueprint. I want this ability to automatically activate whenever it receives the trigger.lightning gameplay event. So I'm going to add that to the list of triggers and then I will wait for that gameplay event so that I can get the target of that event. As always, you'll want to make sure that the target is valid before continuing, and then we'll want to define a few helper functions that we know we'll need for this ability. We'll also want to create a few local variables, namely actors hit so far. It will store a list of all the actors that we've actually damaged with this cast of lightning. And we'll also want to store a list of positions because if the targets die, we won't be able to get their actor locations and therefore won't be able to render the lightning VFX at their locations. Since the two lists are pretty related, I think it makes sense to create a macro that we'll want to use whenever we want to add a target to both lists. All right, now that we have all the helper functions created, let's just plop them in here into the main function. Let's first add the main target to all of our lists. Then we'll want to apply the lightning damage to our target. I'll just add the target as an input and also just fix up the macro here. After we've applied damage to our main target, we'll want to damage all of the other enemies around it and have that propagate to the enemies around them as well. So let's add the source actor as an input and I'm gonna rename this to be damage more enemies around target so it's a little bit more clear. At this point, we've identified all of the targets that this ability is damaging. So we can go ahead and draw the lightning VFX. And let's go ahead and add a new input for all of the locations of the actors that are being hit by this ability. We'll be storing all those locations in the array lightning location, so we can just pass that in as the input. Variables and gameplay abilities are actually persisted across activations. So we're gonna to wanna to create a macro to clear both lists and we will use that macro at the end of our ability to ensure both lists are empty when we activate this ability again. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, you should have a good understanding of how this ability will work at a high level. Let's move on and implement each function. To keep this tutorial focused on the ability, I'm gonna assume that you already have a gameplay effect that applies damage using a tag set to determine magnitude. First, we'll wanna create an outgoing spec from the source ability system component. This will allow us to assign a damage value using a tag set. We can set the magnitude to the attribute lightning.damage. And then finally, we can apply the gameplay effects spec to the target. This function is going to scan for actors around the source actor. So first, let's ensure that the actor is valid. Because we want to control the ability's behavior from our attribute set, let's get our attribute bounce radius and pass that in as the input for the trace radius. Our target dummies are of type physics body, so we're gonna pass that in for the object types to look for. We want our lightning bounce to be random, so let's go ahead and shuffle the list of out hits. Assuming that our target dummies have the tag enemy, we're gonna to wanna to iterate through all of our hit actors and make sure that they have the enemy tag first. Once we determine that it is in fact a valid enemy, we're gonna to want to add that enemy to the list of actors that our lightning ability is gonna hit. Because we want to limit the number of times our lightning can bounce, we're going to want to create a macro to quickly check how many enemies we've actually hit so far and ensure that that number is within our attribute max bounces. With this macro defined, we can update our for loop to ensure that we can still add new targets 
before adding them to our list. Once we verify that we can add new targets, let's apply the damage to our new target acquired. We want this function to continue bouncing to other targets if it can, so let's create a new local variable to keep track of the new targets that this specific function has added to the list. Let's add our new target to that list as well. And then after our for loop, we'll want to iterate through all of the new targets and call the same function again if we can still bounce to more targets. To ensure the bounces are also random, let's shuffle the list before iterating through them as well. To prevent us from applying the ability to the same targets, let's also ignore all of the actors that we've hit so far when scanning for targets. To draw the lightning, we'll want to first make sure that we actually hit something before we spawn in an actor that will help us draw the lightning connecting all of our targets together. We of course haven't created that actor yet, so let's go back to our content browser and create a new actor, as well as a new Niagara particle system called lightning. The particle system is going to work pretty similar to a regular beam, except we'll want to tweak some values to our liking. The most important change, however, is making the beam start and end user variables. Don't forget to make them both absolute positions and give them default values so that you can see something in the editor. To make it look more chaotic, make sure to add the jitter component as well. And to make the lightning glow, we'll want to create a new material and simply make the emissive color the particles color as well as its opacity. Now just update your particle system to use this new material and tweak the colors to your liking. With our beam ready, let's go back to our ability and update it to spawn in our VFX actor. Then open up the blueprint and create a new variable for its duration. Make sure that the duration is instance editable and exposed on spawn, and we'll just want to delete this actor after the duration. We'll be drawing a spline where each point is a location of an actor that was hit by the lightning, so go ahead and add a spline component and open up the construction script. First we'll want to delete one of the points because the spline will always have a point by default and it's just kind of mess with the actual lightning effect. Next, create a variable for all the locations where we want our lightning to hit. And like the other one, we'll want to make sure that it's instance editable and exposed on spawn. Next, we'll want to add a point to the spline for each location in that array. And don't forget to set the coordinate space to world. After our spline is initialized, we can render our beam particle system to connect each line segment. We can do that by looping through all the points and creating a Niagara particle system component with our beam start and end variables set to the spline points. To spawn our actual particle system, select the node that creates the component and change the default value to our particle system. Let's also just clear all the points from the spline before trying to construct it because I noticed halfway through the video that it was creating some issues. Finally, let's go back to our ability and pass in the lightning locations as well as the duration from our attribute set. Our ability is pretty much done now, so we can go back to our projectile blueprint and update it to trigger our gameplay event that will then activate the ability. Make sure to pass in the tag that you set up as your trigger for your ability and pass in the target into the gameplay event data. And don't forget to send the event to our player character too. Let's give our player this ability so that we can actually activate it whenever a projectile hits something. Alright, well that's pretty much it. If we hit play, we can verify that our ability works. Right now it's only bouncing once, so we can actually update our attribute to bounce several times and verify that it does in fact bounce more than once. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps out the channel.